let's say you have been working on a code base on the develop branch and you're done with what you're working on and you want to merge the code back into the master branch but you have no idea whether the code that you have written is good enough or not and you want someone else to check your code before you merge it into the master branch just in case you make any obvious errors you can do that with a pull request a pull request in git is short for requesting for a git pull it might be a little bit confusing so let us explain what a pull request is with an analogy imagine you have a crate of bananas that you want to load up onto a ship so you bring that crate of bananas to the harbor which is at this level and then the ship is at this level the only way you can get the bananas onto the ship is to get someone from the ship to throw a rope down so you can tie the rope to your crate of bananas and once you have tied the rope to your crate of bananas you can yell to the person and say hey pull the rope up and that's when they pull the rope up and they can they can get your bananas and store them onto the ship but after they pull the rope up they want to check your bananas and see whether they're good enough if they spot one rotten banana, they might want to say, I want to reject this whole crate of bananas because there's one rotten banana and I want you to change that rotten banana first before um, I take it. So what they do then is to lower down that rope and ask you to change that one rotten banana before bringing it up again, before accepting it. Or another thing that can happen is they take a look at our bananas and say all of them are rotten and they are useless and they throw it away. In this example, the bananas is your code from the developed branch and the ship itself is the main branch. You want to check whether your code is good enough so you ask someone else, the sailor in that case, to pull the bananas up, meaning to pull your code, to look at your code and spot if there are any rotten bananas in there and then ask you to change the things that needs to be changed. That is what a pull request is. The only difference between the energy that we used earlier and an actual pull request is you don't usually go to the ship and ask someone to throw the rope down. What you do is you bring the rope yourself, you tie it to your crate at the base of the ship, and you throw the rope up onto the ship. So in that case, what we call is submitting a pull request. So you throw the rope up and you, you can simply tell the other person to pull. There are two ways to submit a pull request. How you submit the pull request depends on whether you have right access to the repository or not. If you have right access to the repository, it is easier. If you don't, you have to go through some hoops before you can submit a pull request. We will go through how to do both in this video. Before we submit a pull request, what we need to do is to make some changes to the code so we have something to merge. Let's say we want to add a heading into our index.html file and that will be what we will use to merge into the master branch. So in our develop branch, we can add a heading that says I am a heading. And what you need to do before you submit a pull request is to commit this code into the develop branch and also to push it onto the origin. Well, we are going to do that now. So you go into the staging area, stage the code, add a comment message, and then push the develop branch onto the origin. Once you push the code onto the origin, sometimes if you refresh your GitHub page, there will be a message in between the description and the actual repo itself that says your branch has been updated a few seconds ago or a minute ago and then you can compare and do a pull request. If you see that, great, you can click on it and it will set up the pull request page for you automatically. If you don't see it, which is what I am seeing now, what you can do to create a pull request is to go into the pull request tab. Then click on the green button that says 
new pull request. Once you click on the new button that says create pull request, you should come to a page that says compare changes across branches, commits, tags, and more. To create a pull request, you want to set the base to the branch you want to merge to. So in our case, that will be master. And the compare branch is the branch that you want to merge from. So this will be developed in our case. And once you select compare, master and develop, you will be able to see the list of commits that have been changed. What you need to do next, after seeing the list of commits, is to click on the create pull request button again. And GitHub will show you a page that says open a pull request and you'll be able to write some titles and some comments onto your pull request message. Now, if you saw the notice from GitHub earlier where they tell you that your branch has been changed a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago and you can create a pull request, if you click on that button, you will arrive at the same page over here. So without that button, you, we will have to do a few more steps. The title will be the title of the pull request. This is what people will see on the pull request tab. In this case, let's say uh, we say add a heading to the index. And for the comments, let's say I've added a heading. Let me know if it's good. So this will be the message you want to tell people. And once you have added the title and the message, you can click on create pull request. That's the green button on the bottom. And GitHub will create a pull request for you. So this page that you see is the pull request itself. If you click onto the pull request tab on the top, you will be able to see that we have an open pull request and the pull request title says add a heading to the index, which is what we wrote in the pull request title. If you click into that, you will see the page we were on previously. And the message was, I've added a heading, let me know if it's good. So this is how you create a pull request if you are a collaborator and you have right access to the repository. But what if you don't have right access to the repository? That's when you need to create a fork first. Now let us pause here and talk about what a fork is. A fork is not the Git client that you are using. So don't get confused between the two terms. A fork in Git means a repo that is based off another repo. So if you imagine a branch is based off another branch, and that is like the difference between master and develop, a fork is the same structure but on a bigger level so you can have the main repo with a fork of the repo that contains everything in the main repo including the branches of the main repo and when you fork you will put this repo onto your own github page so that seems like there are two separate repos altogether but you can still track the forked repo to the main repo. So that's what a fork is. We are gonna see how a fork looks like in practice. So it's easier for you to visualize. You cannot fork your own repository, so I can't fork this current project and show it to you immediately. So what I'm going to do is to switch to a dummy account and fork the project from the dummy account. So right now I am on my dummy account. My dummy account has the GitHub username that is zellwk2, while my main account has the main username, which is zellwk without the number two. Um, so just to let you differentiate between which is the main account and which is the dummy account we are working on. Once I am on the dummy account, I can fork the project. To fork a repository, you click on the fork button that is on the top right hand corner of the repository. Once you click on it, GitHub will tell you that it is forking the project and it should take a few seconds before the forking is completed. Once the forking is completed, you will be able to see a project folder that looks exactly like the repository that the project is forked from. 
The only difference is if you look at the title of the project, you will see that this is the same name as the project that was originally forked from. The account would be your account instead of the original account. And below the title of the project, you will see that this repo is forked from the original project. That's how you identify whether the fork is successful. When you have a forked repository, you have access to this repository because that is your username on, at the top. You can write to the repository directly. What we usually do when we submit a pull request from a forked repository is to first create a new branch, write the code on that new branch, and then send a pull request from that new branch into the main repository. Uh, but in this example, I'm not going to set up that new branch because I will have to set up fork again and there will be a tedious process. So for this video specifically, what I'm going to do is to write a message on the develop branch and then we will submit a pull request from our develop branch to the main project's branch immediately. So let's start by switching over to the develop branch and let's say we want to add some code and this in this case we are going to add a list into the main tag we are going to edit the index.html directly and add an on out an unordered list with three items Item one, item two, and item three. And we are deliberately not going to close the UL tag to show you how to do a review process in the next video. Right now, we are going to commit this message and then submit a pull request to the main repository. In the commit message, I'm going to say add changes, um, I, I mean add list, and I'm going to commit the changes. Then once you have commit the changes, if you go back to your repository page, beside the branch icon that is below the bar that says commit branches, releases, and contributor, you'll be able to see a new button that did not exist on the main repo. And this new button says new pull request. You can click on this new button to create a pull request. And when you click on that button, Git will bring you to a page that says open a new pull request. And you will have a very similar format as before. But right now it's slightly more complicated because there's a base fork and a base branch followed by a head fork and a head and a compare branch. So if you remember from the previous pull request example, the base branch will be the branch that you want to merge into and the compare branch will be the branch you want to merge from. So if you remember that format, this shouldn't be too hard. The base fork in this case should be the project that we want to merge into. So that will be zlwk slash project, which is our main project. Let's say we want to merge directly into the master branch. We will change develop to master. Then the head fork would be your project, which is zlwk slash project. I mean, zlwk2 slash project, which is on my dummy account. And since we're on the develop branch, we want to merge our changes onto their master branch. That means the compare branch should be developed. And in this title, I'm, I'm going to say add a list. Is this list good enough? Let's put that as the comment. And once you're done, you can create a pull request. Click on the green button to create a pull request. And GitHub will show you the pull request that is on the main project. If you click on the pull request tab, right now it should say two pull requests. The first is add a heading to the index that is created by in the main branch earlier. As our first example, if you had write access. And the second pull request is add a list 
which is created by a forked repository because we didn't have access to the main repository. And with that, let me wrap up this video. A pull request means you're asking someone to pull your changes and to review your changes before merging them into a branch. There are two ways to create a pull request and how you do it depends on whether you have write access to the repository. If you have write access to the repository, you can push your branch onto GitHub and create a new pull request directly from the repositories page. If you do not have write access to the repository, you will need to fork the repository at, to your own page first, then push the changes onto your forked repository and create a new pull request from your repository to the main repository. So that's how you create a new pull request in a nutshell. In the next video, we will talk about how you can review a pull request and whether to accept or reject a request for changes and how that all works out. I'll see you in the next video.